At the northern edge of Britain, a cluster of more than 100 islands make up Shetland. This land of sprawling farms and remote nature reserves is, quite possibly, our wildest corner. Most tourists choose to explore by car or cruise ship, but I've set myself the rather ambitious challenge of walking from one end to the other. And for now at least, the sun is shining. This is Sumbra Head. This is the southernmost point of mainland Shetland. And in the summer months, thousands of migratory birds come here to nest. They return time and time again every single summer. Now, just over there, I can make out Fair Isle, which is the southernmost island of the Shetland Isles. Beyond that, somewhere in the distance across the horizon, that's where you'll find Orkney. And then a little bit further is the British and Scottish mainland. But to the north, Shetland rambles for about another 90 or so miles through an archipelago of beaches and locks and isolated valleys. And that is where I'm headed. Around 40,000 tourists already visit Shetland each year, but it's hoped that a new long-distance walking route could attract thousands more, stimulating the local economy by up to £40 million. Moving slowly is the best way to take in the sheer majesty of Shetland's wilderness, and it also gives me a chance to meet some of the fascinating folk who call these islands home. People like author and anthropologist Catherine Munro, whose book The Ponies at the Edge of the World explores the relationship between Shetland's human population and their animals. Coming to Shetland was an accident, really. I came here for a wedding and I just fell in love with the place and couldn't stop thinking about moving back. The book basically tells the story of Shetland ponies and the people that love them. It's really looking at how the animals that we spend time with, the landscapes that we live in, are just part of our experience of making home. And what is special about exploring that relationship in somewhere like Shetland? Survival here, especially in the past, was very difficult with the type of environment, the type of weather. And if it wasn't for the hardiness and intelligence of the Shetland native breeds, the crofters here wouldn't have been able to survive. And it's one of the reasons that people love Shetland ponies so much today. You know, they are part of the history, but they're part of the present and they're part of the future. So they're just very much part of island life. It comes as no surprise that people visit Shetland and then never choose to leave. With its crashing waves and wide open spaces, I've seldom found anywhere else on the planet that exudes quite such a sense of adventure. I think more than anywhere else in Britain, Shetland seems to have a very significant part of my heart. It seems to be very good for the soul to be either walking or cycling or kayaking around these islands right at the top of the country. It just genuinely feels like you are close to nature. You're surrounded by wildlife. And to get to the end of a long day, having walked 10 or 15 miles, to sit on this beach, watch the sunset and have a beer, I don't think there's anywhere else in Britain, but perhaps anywhere else in the world that I'd rather be. I've been lucky with the weather, four days of sunshine and just a gentle breeze. But as I cross over onto Unst, Britain's northernmost inhabited island, the wind speed has hit 60 miles per hour and I can barely stand, let alone hear myself think. Thankfully though, the hardy locals know a secluded spot or two. The lifestyle of living right at the top of Britain, what is it like? Myself and my wife, we've both lived away from Shetland for, you know, a bit of experience elsewhere, but, but there's nowhere else you'd rather be than here, bringing up the kids in this environment. And in terms of Shetland as a wildlife destination, what makes this place so special? Shetland's probably best known for otters and orcas especially. And Shetland's such a special place for watching otters because you've got that beautiful open expanse of coastline where you can follow them all day. It's a really magical combination of just the, the species we have here, the, the, the density of the species, and also just the access to it and the, the backdrop of the landscape. 
scenery like this with a with a pod of orca going by you. It takes a bit of beating. It's an amazing place to be, an amazing place to live. As I reach the very top of Shetland, the sleet is turning to snow. This really is a harsh and unrelenting landscape where humans are outnumbered by sheep and the boundary between earth and sea is blurred. But in that is the great appeal, because to experience Britain at its most extreme is to also see it at its very best. This feels like the end of a great British adventure. From the southernmost point of Shetland all the way to the very top, Behind me is the Muckle Flugger Lighthouse, the northernmost point of Britain, and this really is the end of the line. <laughs>